Let's talk about, though, the international senior men's team. So there are a lot of reports in the papers this morning after all the speculation that the FAI are close to, although it has been confirmed and are likely to in the next couple of weeks, uh, offer Stephen Kenny a contract extension. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think I'd back Stephen Kenny. Um, I'm a big fan. I remember coming here to Tallinn watching his under-21s and um, when he took over and they played a, a really good brand of football and a lot of them players now in the, in the senior team. Um, look, they've came a long way from that Luxembourg defeat in the Aviva Stadium um, and the, the, the win uh, against Luxembourg, the 3 0 win, was, was really good to watch. Um, I particularly liked the, enjoyed the, the second goal when, when they played out from the back, switched it from, from right to left, and a really clever ball through from, from Hendrick. And it was Knight who came on and changed the game, and Agbene got a really well deserved goal too. So, look, like really nice, intricate play. And, um, I think the, the future is bright and I think the Nations League will be really good uh, preparation, not that it's to be underestimated for the European qualifiers coming up. But funnily enough, a couple of the players involved in those goals could well be playing this evening because they are eligible to play because Stephen Kenny has obviously gone with a lot of youth, a, lo- a lot of experienced players as well. What are your thoughts on it, Noel? Well, my thoughts, I'm a pro-Ireland and pro, I'm not anti-Stephen Kenny, I'm not anti-anybody. Uh, I think he'd be a very lucky man, I think, at this time. I, I agree with what Liam Brady had said earlier in the week, uh, where you, there's no rush. Why would you rush? The Nations League is uh, against six games against teams who are down in our own, re- not relegation, in our own uh, division seedings at this stage. And I think that would be a great judge to see how we go. Um, I don't see the benefits uh, of actually giving them an extension at this stage. I think that's just normal football. Well, well, what is it like for a player when there are still all these question marks over your manager? Everybody expects that after the campaign ends, well, okay, it started absolutely disastrously and there's no point pretending otherwise, but he always claimed he was building. It looks like that building is finally coming to fruition. If you're a player and there appear to still be question marks and no official backing from the FAI from your manager, does that affect your performances? Does it affect your mindset? Um, look, I think from the whole campaign, you can see there's a real togetherness with the, the Blunger players and the squads. And I think they've came out um, publicly and, and backed the manager. And um, looking from the outside in, I, I think they're they're fully fully behind them as well. So I think they'd like to see him continue on and, and get that contract and that stability. But whether he does or he doesn't, I think he'll hopefully I'd back him to do a good job in the Nations League and still get that, that contract going into the European qualifiers after that. I, I think players want to win. I think they want to play. They want to be successful. And there's an awful lot made out of managers that doesn't really uh, involve them. It's the players and the qual- quality of the players that you have to work with. And that could be at the girls' game. It could be at the men's game. And I think it's, it's how you do that. And I just still don't understand why people would want to give anybody, and not just uh, Stephen, anybody, a contract before we're starting on a new campaign and a new tournament. Well, the suggestion the suggestion was made by Vinnie Perth on, on off the ball last week after the Portugal game. He reckoned that when Pepe was sent off that Stephen Kenny did not make the decision he would normally make because he was so concerned about results because he was under pressure with regards to the contract situation. That, that may be true, but surely to God, it's just a new, a new competition starting. Six games in the competition against people who are seated around ourselves. And that would be a great, op- a great opportunity for Stephen to say, look, I've won this group, we've topped the group before, and then go from there. And let, let's look then maybe at two years, four years if he wants. But he still has to come out of, of the bad sequence of results we had. Okay, well, well, many people would claim he has gone out Not of that ba- bad sequence with the run that they've had and the number of goals that they've scored this year alone has been more than the previous three years combined. <laughs> John, uh, John, when you talk about very, very, very small number of goals scored, we went so many games without scoring. And that wasn't a joy to anybody, and nobody likes seeing that. And I'm not criticising anybody for it, but that's just the reality of, of the way we are. Well, that's it, exactly. But but Ireland have scored. Now, regardless, against lower, uh, much, much lower-ranked teams, they're the very teams who were struggling to put goals in for a long time. I think it was 20 years since we've had uh, back-to-back 3-0 wins for the Republic of Ireland. Yeah, and Joanne, four clean sheets in a row as well, and I think that's obviously building towards something too. And look, you look and at the start, then he took over and got really bad run of results. The COVID, obviously, he took over in COVID, and that upset the, the playoff chances. And then I think he's built from there, and... Look, things are looking a, a lot more positive and I, I would give them a chance. And well, well, do you I'd not like, think, do you like not think, do you not like think they're more attractive to watch now like than they have been in the past? And now they're getting results. I would have been well, critical no, if I'm, I'm true. I'd have to say I'd love to see and we have been capable the way we play of qualifying for World Cups, European finals. And there's no need. Uh, let's have a look. I'm sorry, you're saying that this current team this that's, that's filled with League One players, Championship players, some players who aren't even making them to the Championship are capable of making a World Cup? This, this team that we have? Yes. 
I don't think they are. I hope okay. they are. I think that I think that was the general point made, wasn't it? The third seeds in the group and the finished third seeds, although only goal difference separating from Luxembourg, which would be, I presume, an argument that that Noel and Liam would both make. <laughs> yeah, look, like I, I, I wish think pe- I wish people had stopped talking about his new job. He has six more games. We have a brand new tournament coming on. A tournament that will decide how good and how bad we have how we are. It won't be over one game or two games. It'll be over six games. Let's see how we go. We're all behind him. If he wins and he's successful, if he's not, well, everybody goes against the, the poor old manager. <laughs> okay, well there you go. And-